The Tusken Jedi, Asherod Het. One who begins his journey as a Jedi race Tusken Raider who joins the Order but eventually becomes the terrifyingly powerful Darth Krayt. Last time we talked about Asherod, he had fought his way out of Order 66 when no other Jedi could, and we've mentioned his input into Anakin's personal life and being one of the few individuals that knew of Anakin's rage and massacre of the Tusken tribe, one that Asherod would forgive him for. And today, we are going to be looking into the time just after Asherod's escape from the Jedi Purge, how he actually met and dueled Obi-Wan Kenobi on the sand dunes of Tatooine. And unfortunately for Master Kenobi's streak of being responsible for future Sith Lords, did not end with Anakin's burning on Mustafar. So what happened? Why would Asherod want to fight his former friend in the Jedi Order? And how did it lead him on his journey to becoming a Sith Lord, Darth Krayt? Well today, my friends, let us open a holocron and continue to document the life of Master Het, resuming with his return to his home of Tatooine. Asherod was the son of Sherrod Het, a famous Jedi who was renowned for his skill on the battlefield. Sherrod would leave the Jedi Order in self-imposed exile, fearing that his fame was leading him towards the dark side. After landing on Tatooine and proving his mettle to a Tusken tribe, Sherrod would climb through their ranks and become a war chief. While uniting the Tusken tribes together, he had a son with another Tusken raised human woman, a son who they named Asherod. Eventually, though, Sherrod Het would be murdered by the assassin Aura Singh, and Asherod would join the Jedi Order for training. Eventually, though, after Order 66, Asherod Het was the only Jedi that didn't run and hide. Instead, he let loose and cut down every single clone trooper in his path literally fighting his way out like all of the Jedi should have. When it was all said and done, Asherod Het believed that no other Jedi was alive in the galaxy, and he would return to his home on Tatooine to lead the Tusken tribes just as his father had. And now, our story begins. Asherod Het was extremely proud of his Tusken heritage. He considered himself a pure-blooded Tusken and followed their ways, even turning on his own human race and believing that all of the sand of Tatooine belonged to the Tuskens. Already warped to feelings of pain and vengeance by the Jedi Purge, the sands of Tatooine slowly eroded away his sanity. When he arrived on Tatooine, he discovered that the Tatooine settlers had pushed the Tusken tribe farther back into the Junlin wastes the wastes that his father had once led the tribe out of. Assuming command of the tribe that his father once had led, Asherod became a war chief and brought many raider tribes together to become a powerful force. Under his leadership, they began taking back the Jundlin wastes and driving off the farmers and the settlers. Asherod became a powerful general and warrior and lost complete sight of the way of the Jedi, now shirking that path and choosing to be a Tuscan through and through, with the warrior skills of a Jedi Master. But that was until his tribe would decide to tread on a very specific moisture farm, where he would find a fellow Jedi Master waiting for him. As the tribe approached, Asherod would halt his herd of Bantha Riders, as he saw something that he did not believe at first. Obi-Wan Kenobi was waiting there. He climbed down to go meet his former friend, and they exchanged cordial greetings. Asherod was very happy that Obi-Wan had survived Order 66, and that he was now no longer alone. He then asked Kenobi what brought him to Tatooine, or more specifically, the waste that they were now tracking. Obi-Wan doesn't tell him the actual reason he's on Tatooine though, but instead decides to just deflect the question with a half-truth. He tells Asherod that the reason he is there is that he heard that Het had been leading the Tuskens as a warlord, something a Jedi should not do. Het immediately becomes defensive and angry with the classic, don't lecture me, Obi-Wan. This reminds Kenobi that they were all generals and warlords in the Clone Wars. He then goes on to say that he is performing his Jedi duty by protecting the Tusken clan since they were the ones that were oppressed. Obi-Wan once again rebukes him by saying that the danger is in becoming what you fight against. It was the trap that all the Jedi fell into and the one that Asherod is now falling victim to as well. But instead of listening to Kenobi's wisdom, a vengeful and angry Asherod cements his place as a Tusken Raider war chief. First, by reiterating that he was raised among their people and that they are his people. If the settlers won't stop killing Tuskens, then it's blood for blood. Obi-Wan, though, nodded his head and ignited his lightsaber. 
telling Asherod that he has given himself over to revenge and that that revenge stops here. Het ignites both of his green lightsabers and promises that Kenobi will have a Jedi funeral for old time's sake. Then, no more words are exchanged and they cross blades. Kenobi is able to contend with Asherod's ferocious Jarkai style with impenetrable Sarisu defense, though Head is able to clear Kenobi's lightsaber away just enough to deliver a kick to his stomach that sends the Jedi Master flying. Obi-Wan rights himself through a cartwheel, narrowly avoiding Asherod's spinning left saber, which he has just thrown. Obi-Wan re-engages with the Tusken Master as Asherod's left saber returns to him. There is a moment when Master Het nearly gets the best of Obi-Wan when he catches him with a swift hilt bash and then nearly cleaves through Obi-Wan, cutting him in half with a vertical slash. Luckily, Kenobi parries it and pays Asherod back with a kick of his own. Their fierce duel in the sand continues under the setting suns of Tatooine as the Tusken tribe watches on, placed atop their Banthas. But Kenobi knows that he doesn't have any time to be dealing with other Tuskens. Those Tuskens drunk with revenge. Either you are a Jedi, Kenobi thinks to himself, or you are not. And if Asherod is not a Jedi, then he must be dealt with. The duel comes to a shockingly abrupt end when Asherod jumps at Kenobi with both sabers, going for a swooping Hawkbat strike. And then, Obi-Wan reaches forward and blows Asherod's arm off with the Force. As the Tusken Jedi lets out a wail of agony, Obi-Wan rids him of his second lightsaber with another flick of the Force, though he spares Asherod's left arm in the process. And finally, Het is falling to the ground as Obi-Wan reaches out and tears off his Tusken mask. All of the tribesmen on their Banthas see as their brother is now totally disgraced before them. He has one arm and therefore can no longer hold a Gaddafi staff. By Tusken law, he must be left behind and abandoned. But if that wasn't enough, it's highly disgraceful to show skin in Tusken culture, especially one's face. Obi-Wan ensured that Asherod will never be able to lead the Tuskens again or ever be a part of any of their tribes. Obi-Wan has taken his life away. Asherod, realizing his new position, watches as his tribesmen leave him there on his knees and walk back to the Jundlin Waste. Defeated and completely purposeless, he brokenly tells Kenobi that he must die here. But instead, Kenobi refuses to deliver the killing blow, wishing for Asherod to meditate on the Force the one that he had lost. Kenobi spares the Jedi, but makes him swear by his father's honor that he will never return to Tatooine. Het accepts his fate and departs the Sand Dunes, never to return to the world nor his people. It would be after this that Asherod would end up as a bounty hunter and find his way to the world of Korriban. This is where his path would forever deviate into darkness, but that, my friends, is a story for another holocron. Something that has always surprised me about this duel specifically is just how cutthroat Kenobi is. It borders on cruelty what he did to Asherod. He didn't cut off his arm with a lightsaber. He blew it clean off with the Force, something Kenobi has never done before. This is an extremely harsh and a brutal injury. To make things worse, he disgraced Asherod in front of his tribe and removed his mask. Kenobi removes any chance of Asherod ever being with his people a part of a tribe ever again. His heritage was everything to him, and Kenobi took it all away, taking away the memory of his father, the tribe that he grew up in, and what it meant to him, what it meant to be a Tuscan. And then Kenobi orders him to leave. For those familiar with Asherod, we know just how brutal of a blow this really was. He would have preferred Kenobi kill him just there. He could have died looking upon the Dune Sea. In the 1998 comics where Asherod made his first appearance, he mentions to his master Kiadi Mundi that despite seeing the plants and oceans of other worlds, he still believes that none compared to the beauty of the sands of Tatooine, growing up, finding a love for the arid wasteland, and for the love of his people. But beyond all the beauty, Asherod refused to stop storming human settlements and killing settlers. The Sand People as we know are a huge problem of Tatooine, and with a powerful Jedi leading them, it would have spelled disaster for the people there. Countless lives would have been lost, and Obi-Wan as a Jedi had to think about the bigger picture. One man's disgrace, or the lives of an entire populace, including Luke. 
Ben Kenobi swore on his life to protect the son of Anakin, and that was something that he would do, even if it meant committing brutal acts unbefitting of a Jedi. He was the sentinel of the farm, and the barrier between them, in all kinds of danger, whether Owen liked it or not. Osherod would find this out many years later when the Skywalker line continued to thrive throughout the galaxy, and he would discover the truth of why Obi-Wan had fought so hard that fateful day on Tatooine. But what do you think, my friends? Let us open up the debate. Do you agree that what Obi-Wan did had to be done, and was necessary, or do you believe that he took things way too far? became way too vengeful and cut throat. For me, this is absolutely one of the most critical decisions that Kenobi has ever made, putting Luke above everything else, even his stance as a Jedi. And it also makes Asherod Het an extremely tragic character with an even darker future, one that we will be exploring very soon. But if you've been enjoying our documentation on Asherod Het, it would help us out a great deal if you could leave a like and comment down below what other character stories you would like to see us explore. As always, my friends, thank you for visiting the archives today, and may the Force be with you.